Royal Highness Prince Daniel, Minister, gentlemen and ladies. I'm very pleased to be here today. It's a very important day and also to be able to talk from the Nordic perspective. Our Nordic countries have ambitions to lead by setting examples, not only for ourselves, but also for the global community. All Nordic countries have committed to become climate neutral within the next decades, even if we have slightly different strategies to go there. Norway, for example, says that all shore toll flights will be electric by 2040. This was a trigger for this whole industry globally, I would say, and also for our project. In Sweden, we say that all domestic flights will be fossil free by 2030 and international flights by 2045. We have not said that it should be electric or biofuels or we look into all the different solutions, but electric aviation will certainly be one of them. Our Nordic countries leading the way towards electric aviation. We are used to work together and find solutions together, and that's what we are doing in NIA. We bring our stakeholders, country stakeholders together to get Nordic synergies and accelerate the work together. We are quite small, one by one, but together the Nordic countries are the 12th economy in the world. They gives us muscles. Iceland there is taking part in this project because it's part of the strategy of the company to be sustainable and be prepared for the future. And hopefully Iceland there can uh, contribute into the work both with the, its uh, operational uh, expertise and technical expertise and the knowledge of the business models that could try the change. We do have the stakeholders that will make this happen. We have the airports, we have the airlines. So it's not that we are just sitting around discussing because this is the input that they need to move on and actually do the implementation of the electric aviation. Based on information we have from the aircraft producers, we think that the first electric or electrified aircraft could be in traffic in around 2025. They will be small and they will have limited range, but they could be perfect for many of the really short routes in, uh, in, uh, in Norway. My expectations to the Nordic network for electric aviation is that we could perhaps be an interesting testing spot. There's a lot of talk about collaboration and cooperation in the aviation sector. So if we could contribute to that, that's, uh, that's definitely an interesting uh, place to, uh, to be. If we can show that this can be done in the Nordics, then that could be exported to other parts of the world. And maybe they can then do a leap and they don't have maybe to take all the steps towards a more uh, zero carbon aviation. The changes I've seen for the last 20 years is the climate impact. We can see it directly in Greenland, flying on top of the ice cap. We see the melting of the ice cap. We see the glaciers withdrawing, getting smaller. So that's the big changes we have seen. And this is just for the last 15, 20 years. So just in short words, we are waiting for, the, for an electric aircraft, CS23 certified, painted red, and then we are ready to go. As you saw here in the movie, standardized electric air infrastructure in the Nordics is work package number one. It's a very important package for us. And before anyone says anything that is not a task for the Nordics, it's a global task. I would say, yes, I agree with you, but I think maybe it could be both. So um, I think I have to call a friend to see what they say to get some help. 
So, um, hello yesterday. Uh, how did you do when you standardized the telecom industry back in 1981? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We do have an answer. Back in 1985, the Nordic countries were gathered and we founded the standard, the Nordic standard for telecom that then became the global standard, that then became 3G, 4G, 5G, and who knows what else it will be the, found, the, the ground for. So this phone is a reminder to us in the project about our ambition. A Nordic standard that can accelerate the work towards a global standard. The road forward for electric aviation has just started. We are about in the same place as NMT was in this picture. It's uh, cool and a little bit mysterious. We don't really know what the future will hold for us or where it will lead. But today, mobile systems is part of everyday life all over the globe. It has been a huge importance for the countries that didn't have the infrastructure for landlines since they could go directly to mobile networks. Heart SE19 is the third generation of electric aviation. It's thrilling to think about the fifth generation. Will it even look like planes that we know about today? Only 18% of the people of the world have flown up till today. As incomes rise with the global middle class, the remaining 82% of the world wants to fly and will be flying. More air travel means increased CO2 emissions from airplanes. But does it have to be that way? Or could countries that today don't have that much air traffic go directly to electric aviation or other more sustainable ways of flying? Too close. I would like to say that without the brave people here in the room today, this wouldn't be happening. We need people and businesses that dare to take the first step airliners like SAS, airports like Svidovia and the regional airports, they are all represented here today. They are already planning for the future. And to fulfill their needs, we also need someone that are daring enough to build the plane, like Anders and Clara and the rest of the crew of Hart Aerospace. But to dare is not enough. You also need a dream. And I'm very happy that we are able to share your dream, Anders and Clara, both today and in the future. Thank you. <laughs>